All right, welcome to another episode of Photoshop is Fun. And I'm particularly very excited about this um, tutorial today because <clears throat> not only is it one of the more popular requests that I get for, um, you know, how to's in, in Photoshop, but as you've probably already noticed um, in the UI that I'm using for Photoshop here, it's quite different from what you're probably used to. And the reason for that is because I'm using Photoshop 6. This is the beta build of Photoshop and it's out, it's publicly available, anybody can download it and get, get to know it for 60 days. It's absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend it. It's a little slow to load, but after that it's beautiful. Adobe's really brought um, some sweet technology and um, refined some of their um, better tools um, that you that you probably use in CS5 and um, they're just so much better in CS6. I just love it. All right, that said, let's jump straight into this and what we're going to focus on today is how to extract either an object or a subject from a um, particular photograph so that they can be used in another photograph or in some other creative way. And the trick to this, especially when you're working with people, is um, capturing and um, refining the wispy hair, um, the individual strands of hair and things like that. Um, and that's really what, um, you know, either makes your photograph and your work um, look realistic and uh, professional or, you know, look amateur and like you're using uh, Photoshop, you know, CS2 or 3. Um, so all of that said, let's jump straight into it. And let me show you how to do this in Photoshop, either CS5 or CS6, if you um, go and download the beta. And let me also say that anytime you get to go up to the San Juans and work with a beautiful model in the water, it's always a good day. So I'm happy to use this photo today. Um, and what I want to do basically is just take Michelle and extract her from the background. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop her into a similar background just to show you how this can be done. And again, you could put her in any background, but if I were to turn off this layer, you can see another um, kind of beach scene. And this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop her back into this one. Okay. So to get started, what you do is you go ahead and you grab your quick selection tool and there's a ton of different ways to select things in Photoshop, but generally speaking for this type of work um, and this type of photo, um, the quick selection tool works wonders. And I'm going to go ahead and use my bracket keys to um, select a larger brush. And you can see in the center of that brush is a plus sign and that means go ahead and select and grab um, the object that you're brushing. And you can see that the um, uh, marching ants or the marquees all around the, uh, the subject and um, did a pretty good job. But you can also see over here underneath her arm that it's selected that. And we don't necessarily want that selected. We want that um, water to be um, not visible in our final output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my bracket keys to get a smaller brush and I am going to hold down the alt key and you'll see that the brush um, the plus sign in the middle of the brush turns to a minus. And that means unselect this area. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it went into the skin a little bit, so I'm going to reuse the plus sign to go back over the skin and say, hey, you know, keep, keep that selected. And Photoshop does its magic and, and figures it all out, usually. <laughs> So I'm going to go up and look at the hair and you can see that I didn't get all of the hair and that's okay because we're going to go ahead and deal with that in a minute. But if I wanted to, I could kind of go over it and um, let Photoshop know that I'm interested in the hair. And um, a little bit there. And for the most part, that's good. Oh, there's some shadow here underneath her ear behind her head. And I'm going to go ahead and select that. And I think that'll do do let's look over here yeah this is good this is a great selection um, it's exactly what I want to start with okay so once you've selected your subject or your object go up and click the refine edge button and you can see right away um, what's going on here so over here in the refine edge um, viewfinder you can see there is a view drop down and you have ma marching ants which is basically that marquee and you can see it's around the selected object. And um, there's also the overlay, which is what we started with. There's also on black, which is kind of nice. And then there's on white, of course. And then there's black and white, which I really like for certain things. And I'll, I'll kind of go over that here in a little bit. And then there's on layers, and that'll show the background that we're going to put her on. 
which is actually really nice to work with if you have that available and ready to go um, because then you can really kind of um, make all your refinements um, really custom to the image that you're going to use underneath. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and just do the overlay. This is the one I work with quite a bit, and I find it's the most useful. Now, she's obviously not um, perfectly selected, and if you were to look at her arms in particular, let's go ahead and do that so I can kind of give you an idea what's going on here. And um, I'm going to actually switch this back to black for a second so you can see it. You can see her arms aren't that fantastic. They're really aliased. They're not very smooth. Um, it's not a perfect selection. And so what I want to do is um, I want to go ahead and make sure that I click the Refine Radius tool in this brush over here. And what you're going to do is basically tell Photoshop to relook at these edges. So you take the tool and you basically just brush the edge. And again, you're just telling Photoshop, hey, this isn't perfect. Go back and look at this and, and do your magic. And you can see the difference already. Look at this versus down here. It's, it's pretty dramatic. So you basically just want to do this around your entire image or wherever you have problems. And um, Photoshop generally does a really nice job uh, making its corrections and smoothing things out nicely so that they can be extracted from the image. And there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and really zoom in tight here and tell Photoshop that uh, I'm not overly happy with this area and to relook at it. And okay, so now I'm going to come back for a minute and I'm going to. And again, I'm not going to do a fantastic job here just because I don't want to waste too much of your time. I just want to show you how the technique works. Um, and you can, you know, when you actually have a photograph that you want to work with, you can. And so let's get in a little tighter here. see it's doing a pretty decent job and right here you can see we have um, we have some bleed so what you want to do there is basically just take um, the eraser tool and go over and it'll clean that up for you and then I'm going to switch back to the uh, refine radius tool Tell Photoshop to pay attention to this ear. Make sure everything's cool. Um, and again, in that area where I can see that it didn't um, it didn't do what I wanted it to, I'm going to use the eraser tool and um, and ask it to clean that up. And there you go. Ears looking pretty good. Now this is where it gets fun, and this is where the technology really shines. So I'm up in the wispy hair, right? And I'm going to switch this view so that you get a better idea of what's going on to overlay. And you can see where the blue is and how the blue got pulled in and didn't get um, extracted from, from the background so or, or from the subject that I'm trying to pull out of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and just run my tool over these areas. And look at that. You can already see it pull out that blue really nicely, but still leave the wispy hair. And it does a pretty darn good job. Um, and again, if if I were to spend more time on this, um, you know, an extra 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes goes a long way if you're doing, um, you know, really nice work or something that you need to be proud of or, you know, some kind of professional commercial work. Um, and I'm going to come over here. But since I'm just doing this for the tutorial, like I said, I'm going to be kind of sloppy with it um, just to show you how to do it. But you can see already that it does a pretty darn good job. There we go. Okay, pretty decent, right? <laughs> Definitely uh, better than how we used to have to do it in CS3. And, um, it took a lot longer. It was a lot more work. It was a lot less accurate, that's for sure. 
um, and just the technology just gets better and better with each release. And I, re I really have to give the uh, engineers at Adobe props because they have done a, a fantastic job with this um, particular tool. And again, you can see how it just starts to smooth out that edge really nicely. And we're just kind of coming into the final stretch here. And then I'll kind of um, show you some uh, additional things with this particular tool. And, um, and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. All right, let me back out a little bit, take a look. Um, and it looks pretty good. And um, one of the things I want to show you is, let me clean this up just a tad. One of the things I want to show you is um, the rest of the um, controls within this window. Now, I've shown you the view. Um, the other thing you can do here is the um, the radius slider, and this is just a way of um, you know refining your area here. So, and 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 as it says there, that the size of that area. So, you can. The best way to actually do these sliders, I think, is um, in the black and white mode. You can get a view of kind of what they do. So if you're to slide this way up, you can start to see um, how that um, uh, refined area starts to widen and, and get larger. Um, and that comes in handy with certain types of photographs. Again, you want to play with these sliders if you're not getting the perfect results. And um, you'll, you'll see how they kind of work and how to hone them in. Um, the smooth edge um, slider is pretty nice. Um, for wispy hair, it doesn't work fantastic because what it'll do is it'll start to smooth them out. So if you want to retain the wispy hair, the smooth slider isn't the best way to go. But for other things, it's fantastic. Um, you can see as I start to smooth things out, um, what it does on the edges. Um, feather is very similar. It's a feathered effect on the edges. Um, it's, it's a little more dramatic than the smooth slider. And then contrast, as you can imagine, is more of a jaggedy, um, sharp um, contrast on your edges. And then um, the other one that I really want to have you pay attention to is the um, decontaminate uh, colors. And if you're familiar with how light works, and you know, if you're a photographer in particular, you probably know this, but um, very often what light will do is, is it'll cast color. It'll either you know, bounce off some object and throw that color on your subject. As you can see here, there's a lot of blue that got thrown onto her hair, um, even back here. And um, what decontaminate colors is, is it looks at these edges and it looks for um, colors that uh, uh, are reflective colors. So from something else within the environment. And it looks to um, um, neutralize those so that they're not so visible. And so if I were to turn that on and then turn the slider way up, you can start to see the edges. See how that blue goes away? And that's, you know, that's a pretty, pretty slick little effect. Um, uh, that Photoshop knows how to do now pretty darn well. So use that as well when you're extracting a subject um, who has wispy hair or who has a lot of um, color and light overflow under their skin or onto some kind of um, their hair or something like that. Use use this uh, decontaminate colors. It works really well. And then lastly, the, the thing I want to point out is the output to. And this drop down will allow you to output to a um, layer mask, either a new layer, a new layer with a mask um, as a new document, and then or as a new document with a layer mask. The one I usually use is new layer with a layer mask. It uh, creates a, a non-destructive version of what you're doing so that you can tweak things um, as you continue to process your picture. Um, it's a really nice, nice way to uh, have a non-destructive version of this. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And already um, I have uh, Michelle on a new background. Um, she's not on the original background. There's the original. So I've put her on a new background. Um, of course, the lighting's off um, from the background. So if I really wanted to use her atop of this particular image, I would start to um, do some other refinement techniques um, around light, like the burn tool in particular. Um, I'd start to use my burn tool around um, some of her edges to make sure that light was casting in the right way. And um, in the end, this would be a pretty decent picture. You'd most likely think that she was actually in this scene when this shot was taken, and, uh, and uh, it would look good. So 
That's how you pull a subject or an object out of a particular photograph using Photoshop CS5 or Photoshop CS6. And I will talk to you next time for the next tutorial.